Well, uh, one of the benefits of this coronavirus thing for me is that I'm getting to spend a lot more time in the house. Uh, only problem is my lunch breaks are now four to five hours long instead of the 30 I usually <laughs> get. Uh, I've been binging a lot of older WC or later WCW stuff that I missed out on. Uh, and I've, I've really become a total mark for Scott Steiner. I think it was during 2000, he was maybe one of the best in the world. Uh, but the, the big match <clears throat> that WCW never gave us was Scott Steiner versus Hulk Hogan. <clears throat> so uh, have you ever had heard any stories of why that feud never happened? Because just to be a, a, a dick, a, a dick, I don't know why I call myself that, uh, I personally at a meet and greet witnessed uh, Scott Steiner talk about how Russo was going to do a storyline with them that was going to last four pay-per-views and then literally within 15 minutes before going on air the whole thing was dropped uh, so uh, that's what he said it might be a load of shit but uh, I was wondering have you ever heard any rumours or theories as to why Steiner versus Hogan never happened well I think timing had a lot to do with it as well when Hogan turned heel and joined the NWO in 1996. Um, you know, Scott Steiner was still Steiner Brothers, still babyface. And you had Steiners feuding a little bit with Hall and Nash. But, you know, Hogan was always the main eventer and always, you know, the, the big guy, the focal point. Scott Steiner was always tag team wrestler. It was only when he started you know, changing his look. And, and I, when I was doing my history shows and I stopped them about two years ago, I always talked about the time that Scott Steiner technically turned heel, but didn't turn heel. And it was several years before he ever, you know, the full blown heel. I, I don't remember if the match was against Ricky Steamboat or someone, but you know, they teased him turning heel and it was very interesting at the time, but Scott Steiner, you know, when you think of, the, you know, Michigan and, you know, him with his brother, he was just such like a, a, a you know, not a clear cut baby face because when he had that brief cup of tea in ECW, you know, he had a little bit of an attitude with him, but, you know, wasn't just like a, like an anger. But when he turned heel and then dyed his hair and then became the big bad booty daddy, you know, at the same time, Hogan was also a heel. And, you know, I'm assuming when you're talking about what Vince Russo wanted to do, this was right around the time with the new blood. And the problem with, with the new blood and, and it was like the millionaires club is, is that technically Hogan and Scott Steiner would have been really on the, on the same side. And Hogan, you know, when they brought the, the red and yellow back, it was a very short time later that he had the incident at Bash at the Beach with Vince Russo and walked out. So I think early on, I think it was just more that Hulk Hogan was main eventing, Scott Steiner was tag team. When he became Big Bad Booty Daddy, you know, you technically they were heels at the same time and they never really crossed paths. And I, I've been doing my, I, I started doing my wrestling hotline in 97 and I covered this time period as well. I don't really remember too many times where there were reports that Steiner and Hogan were going to have a program. I do believe that Vince Russo uh, thought about it and thought it would be a, a great idea. The problem is how do you get from A to D you know, because at that time, when you think of who Hogan was feuding with, with Nash, and then, you know, then they were together, and then they were apart, and then you had Jeff Jarrett in the mix, and it was like you had to go through so many steps, and then you had Sting into the equation, and Luger, and others, there was never a focus on Steiner and Hogan, and, you know, it's, I think it was just, if, if Hogan didn't have the incident with Vince Russo, I think that could have happened. I think that down the line would have happened. I just don't remember them crossing paths all that much. Just like when Brett and Hogan were in WWF at the time, there were a lot of us that wanted to see 
Brett versus Hogan, you know, we got a, you know, a diversion and Yokozuna got it. And then we learned later on as far as why that, that didn't go down. But that was still, when you look back on it, it was such a short period of time. So, you know, they gave us the aura once Brett went to WCW that Brett versus Hogan is something that people wanted for years and Hogan wouldn't let it happen and this, this and that. And that's not necessarily true because when Brett finally started branching out where people thought he could be a world heavyweight champion, you're talking 1992, maybe 93. And at that time, that's when Hogan pretty much was, you know, starting to go on his way out. And we had the steroid scandal and then he joined WCW. So, you know, you, you, people need, when they t look back on that, they got to look at the time frame. And when you realize that it's so small and there was so much pressure because of the attitude here with WWF and them really getting momentum, you know, to get from here to here by having Hogan versus Steiner, that's not something that many people talked about at the time. 